Hi guys and welcome to part three of Monty's Iron Size. And if you watched my previous video, you may remember that in this video I'm going to be looking at the British uniform, doing a little bit of research into the background and for that I'm going to be using some of the Osprey books. Now Osprey really are a fantastic company, a fantastic resource for any war game and not only do you have all of the, the bolt action rule books that they do, you also get a lot of these kind of books here and this is what I'll be looking at in this video, specifically the British Army 1939-1945 and this is from the, the men at arms range there, a uh, great resource and also this book here, now, this is the German infantrymen versus the British infantrymen and this is a focus more on uh, early war as opposed to late war which is the period I'm looking at in particular, but still some fantastic artwork in there that I can use for reference. So what I'll be doing is I'll be uh, kind of going into a little bit of detail into these books, not covering the entirety of the book in there, there's a lot of information, really fantastic books, but not all of it is relevant to this particular video. So let's get started by taking a look at the British uniform. So here we have the first book that we'll be looking at, which is the British Army 1939-45 to from the Men at Arms range. And I'll be splitting this uh, view into three parts. First one will be the uniform, second will be um, the colours of the equipment on the uniform, and third will just be any other interesting tidbits in this particular book. Now, first of all, we're going to move to page 29E. And this, uh, you can see we've got some artwork of a British infantryman uh, from 1944. We've got a front view and also a back view. So this gives us a really clear indication of uh, the equipment and how it was uh, laid out on the particular soldier. And if I just bring in my uh, infantryman that I assembled in the last video, you can see that it's pretty much the same kind of thing that we've got going on here with the equipment in the same place. If you can see, it, just everything matches up really nicely. So this is great if you just want to see exactly how, uh, where particular equipment was uh, laid out. It's also a great example of the colours of the, uh, the BDUs that we used. Now personally looking at this I would recommend using the uh, Army Painters Leather Brown. Partly because it's a perfect match for this colour and secondly because you can actually get it in a spray primer available which means you can actually just prime your miniatures with this colour and considering that it's the majority colour of the miniatures uh, it just saves a lot of time in painting. So this brings us to the next section, which just flip to page 39. We can see here we've got some of the equipment here, uh, and this is just a, essentially a flat view of the same equipment that we've looked at in the previous picture. We can see exactly all the webbing, how it's laid out, um, and how it was worn. There's a lot of information in these pages as well, by the way. It's not just a case of just pictures. Um, I would highly recommend having a read through these. It gives you some really interesting insights into not only the, the kit itself, but also how it was developed and uh, kind of the pros and cons of certain uh, equipment that was used. So the next page is page 43. Now this is slightly different. Now um, one of the things that I quite liked about this particular image is because that it gives you an idea as to uh, how some of the equipment wasn't necessarily used for how it was designed. For example, we've got this, this guy on the left here. And if you look into just a under his arm, you can see a sten. And in his uh, pockets here that we use mainly used as rifle pouches for ammunition, you can see that he's got some sten magazines just tucked in there. So it's a really nice um, kind of indicator that even though on your miniatures you will have those pouches on there, and you just about to see them on our guy that we assembled just underneath, uh, even if they're not armed with a rifle, it's still perfectly valid. So uh, coming back to um, the beginning again, we can take a look at some of the other interesting pictures. And this is one here at the bottom. Now, I really like this because this is uh, two guys firing uh, a two-inch mortar, and they're lying down as opposed to firing it from a kneeling position. So it gives you a really nice kind of inspiration for uh, a nice little diorama or a little conversion project that you can use your plastic infantryman. Just uh, repositioning the legs so you can lie them down, filling the gaps with a little bit of green stuff. So similarly, we also have on another page this little picture at the bottom, and this is a armoured column um, from 1944 in Normandy. And as you can see here, we've got some Cromwells and also a Sherman Firefly just there. And this is a really nice little picture to kind of help you when you're coming across um, when you want to add stowage items to your tanks, give them a little bit of character. Uh, you can just see exactly how certain equipment was laid out, especially on the, the backs of the tanks there. So this book itself is really an excellent read. Um, it goes from 1939, so the start of the war, as you can see you've got this uh, kind of early war uniform here, right up to 1945, and you can see how the equipment was uh, developed, how changes were made, why those changes were made, and also you get an, kind of an insight as well as to what the soldiers themselves thought of the changes uh, to the particular equipment. So it really is definitely worth a read, uh, just if you're interested in the subject, or if you're using it as a reference point for painting your bolt action miniatures. So with the first book uh, looked at, let's move on to the second one. 
Now the next book is the German Infantryman versus the British Infantryman from the Combat Series. Now this book is centred around France in 1940, so it's not particularly relevant for the period that I'm looking at personally, but if you are looking at building a British uh, infantry force, or even a German infantry force for that matter, this book really is an excellent source. So if I just flick to um, page 24, I believe, um, you can see here we've got um, a really nice kind of outlying of the uniform um, used by the British infantrymen. Now this is actually quite interesting because whilst it also reinforces the fact that we've got the, the brown BDUs here, painting in with other brown would be an excellent idea, it also gives us an idea of still colour of the actual webbing. Now quite often I've seen uh, just a plain khaki used and that's perfectly valid but during this time the British forces used something called Blanco which is essentially a uh, weatherproofer and treatments that was applied to the webbing and it came in like a, a light green colour. It came in a range of different shades uh, throughout the war and different manufacturers made it in slightly different shades. Um, so as you can see here, this guy's gone for um, like a light green. It's applied it over the, uh, over the webbing there. So in my own miniatures, rather than actually painting them khaki with like a skeleton bone, for example, I'm going to be using army green instead. So this will give you a little bit more character, a little bit stand uh, out from uh, the kind of the normal uh, khaki webbing that we usually see. And it also fits in historically, as you can see, with this British infantryman here. Now this book is, uh, like I said, it's mainly, mainly based around 1940, but there is plenty of interesting information about uh, the training and the combat and the tactics employed by the British forces. Now a lot of this probably was changed as the war progressed, and by 1944 um, some of the, some of the things were different, but the, for example the brain gun was still pretty much used, uh, we still got Lee Enfield there. And if I kind of move on, you've got the, the boys' anti-tank rifle. And then this brings us on to um, some of the German soldiers as well. So excellent reference if you're just looking uh, for both either German infantry or British infantry. So now that we've looked at both books, uh, let's get an overall summary for this video. So that's it for part three of Monty's Ironsides. And the aim of this video really was to kind of uh, stress the importance and how, it, how useful doing a little bit of research beforehand before you actually start building and painting your miniatures can be. Um, I mean, there's such a wealth of information out there. I mean, if you're actually playing a sci-fi game, then most of the background and information is dreamt up by the creators. When it's World War II, like bolt action, there's so much out there. There's so many books, there's so many documentaries. Um, you can actually go and f visit physical artifacts and things like that. So it really is an extremely interesting subject to actually uh, build a war game around. Uh, and I mean, looking at these books, um, it's fantastic because not only do they give you an idea as to how to glue on your webbing or how, which colours to use when painting your miniatures. It also gives you a really nice amount of inspiration. I mean, I've already touched upon it um, in the video earlier on, but there's so many different wartime images that you can look at and you can see how equipment was used, um, how storage was applied to tanks, all those kind of things like that. really gives you some nice inspiration when actually modelling your units. Now, I've only looked at two books uh, in this particular video, but there are loads more. There's um, another couple of books I've looked at when um, designing my miniatures and the paint schemes, things like that. It's uh, D-Day 1944, this is the third one, so Sword Beach and the British Airborne Landings, and also the Bernard Montgomery book, and this is because I'm doing the 3rd Infantry Division. So it really is up to you which, I mean, whether or not you're doing British or German or Soviets, there's a whole host of books out there, especially from Osprey. I mean, they focus from uh, things as kind of focused as uh, just a particular weapon, the brain gun, for example. And then they, they do books that range all the way up to full scale engagement. So really, depending on where your focus is, there's always a little bit of information there that you can uh, go take a look at. And they really are really interesting reads. I can't stress that enough. So what I'll do is I'll um, pop a link in the description below, which will take you to the, the pages for the books that I've covered in this, as well as a few others um, that I recommend as well. And then um, be sure to join me for the next video, which I'll be showing you how to paint your bolt action British forces. And as always, I'll be using the army painter range of paints to do so. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.